instance. And we just wanted to leave that out as a, a thought, something that perhaps in another instance might be triggered. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Grant. This, I think uh, you have made um, uh, some uh, really telling and outstanding points. Um, let me let me uh, make an honest um, admission here, as I think it came out uh, in the inaugural session also that uh, India has earned the reputation of being probably one of the best responders in case of an emergency or a disaster situation. And perhaps a similar application towards its developing good early warning systems or preparedness or sensitizing the communities and all those things that you have mentioned, I think that needs a little more work uh, to be done. Uh, but having said that, Mm. Allow me to say that barring, you know, when I, when I imagine a situation in a, in a terrain that it happened and the, as they've said, the scale or the magnitude or the enormity of it, wherever it might happen, I think the first couple of days is just getting to realize as to what has happened and how to handle. So if there is a little bit of a mishmash on coordination, muscular or otherwise, and if we find particularly the non-state actors getting very active, my own experience is the state governments reconcile to the fact that let there be a surplus supplies rather than coming in with a heavy hand of command and control ab initio. But I suppose water finds, it settles down, it finds its level in a couple of days' time and then, you know, there's certain this thing is there. Notwithstanding that, I think um, you have made, um, I have myself written down all the, you said 10, but actually you made 11 points. So, and I assure you, that they'll all be uh, taken note of and we have uh, a couple of very efficient officers uh, taking note of your um, very wise views. If you do not mind, uh, could I have a copy of your printout also because I think that will help us in preparing the final report. Thank you very much for your contribution. We have an Amit, Shri S.K. Muttu, Chief Investment Commissioner, Government of Uttarakhand. Shri Sunil Kumar Muttu, Senior Indian Administrative Service Officer, has served under the Government of Uttar Pradesh subsequently with the Government of Uttarakhand as well as in the Government of India twice, once during 1989-94 in the Ministry of Personnel, Public Grievances and Pensions, and for the second time during 1998-2003 to in the Ministry of Human Resource Development. Shri Muttu present serves the government of Uttarakhand as its chief investment commissioner and as chairman of the board of revenue. He has been made responsible for coordinating the response of civil society with respect to recent disaster in Uttarakhand. Shri S. K. Muttu. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Vice Chairperson of the National Disaster Management Authority, Honorable Chair, other honorable members of uh, NDMA and my colleagues on the days and my friends in the audience. So I first perhaps need to explain why I am talking about lessons learned because uh, actually when this disaster occurred, I was the chief resident commissioner of the state here uh, in New Delhi. And um, at that time, as you know, in a disaster, the situation is very fluid, information is very little, and I can tell you um, that uh, the state government, the state's chief secretary actually, was, was a naturally very cautious person. He pulled out all the stops on very, very incomplete information on the 16th, and he rang up everybody, and I got a call, it was a Sunday, I remember. And I got a call from the cabinet secretary, 
the government of India asking me, what happened in Rudhyabhyad? And I had no information. I said, so I'll find out and let you know. And then after that, it was, uh, I've been working day and night trying to uh, respond to the situation, which was an unprecedented situation. And let me also say, um, because sometimes this issue is raised that whether the response was delayed or it was a prompt response. Um, so let me say that actually um, the response was almost immediate. So as soon as the weather cleared, we were there at the disaster spot at Kedarnath. Uh, which leads me to recommend two things in one of the lessons learned is that um, we must uh, document, in fact I recommended that NIDM, National Institute of Disaster Management, should document the response. Uh, in this country we are not very good at documentation and you need to document almost immediately after the event. So we're very, just about losing that window where all that raw information, whatever happened, this is all disappear after some time. So we should document and so that we know, and we don't want the state government to be involved, let somebody outside come and do it so that's absolutely fair and square. But that will be very useful for actual lessons learned in terms of response. And the second is that um, uh, because we were here and I was also the forced representative of the government to, before the media, the national media also couldn't go there, they used to ask me these questions. And we have very little information. And something has been presented here about the cause, scientific cause, what actually was the disaster event. Um, but still there are variations. So I would recommend that, as should happen in any case, some scientists should multi should get down yes. and let us have the story from them. What happened? Because I, I, in my view, I mean, whatever I've learned, it's a glacial lake outburst flood and precise rain, etc. Et so these are two things. Then, sir, the obvious thing, um, which I think the state government has already accepted in principle, is that it's um, extremely risky as we found out, to have this large number of people assemble at remote locations which you can't reach, like in Anna. We, we couldn't do anything. <laughs> Even if we wanted to, we couldn't. Um, so it's the same thing is there in Badrinath. 9,000, 10,000 people. So I, the state government has realized that it is um, not a good idea to have these people there. Maybe the pilgrim should be at a safer side where they can be accessed and removed in case of problems. Um, then, so the disasters actually two parts. One was the unprecedented and absolutely horrible disaster in Kedarna, where we lost a lot of people. And the other was that these um, pilgrims got stuck at various points and they started panicking. Um, and that happened because um, we got multiple slides. I've worked in the state even when it was this part of uh, this region when it was part of UP for three, four years. Uh, so I know the area and I have never seen so many, so all the slides coming down together and every part of the network in Garwal getting blocked. I've never seen it. But it happened. Um, so then um, uh, when we're trying to get these roads open, uh, then I had to interact very closely with um, the BRO, the Border Roads Organization. And incidentally, uh, earlier I was disaster secretary in the state, and at that time also we had a problem. At that time also we interacted very closely with the BRO. So what did the BRO tell us at that time? That is about uh, 2010. And then again in 11. They said, okay, sir, 
you don't have modern building equipment. So we've been raising this point with Government of India, MHA, uh, MORTH, Ministry of Road Transport. You don't have a bridging equipment which can be heli lifted and you can open up a uh, area which has been just uh, cut off because there's no bridge. So we're still using Bailey bridges and Bailey bridges also we don't have enough. Now the state government has already bought 18 uh, Bailey bridges. So we need to do that. Um, then the, we also learnt, and we again learnt in this uh, present disaster, that these roads, when they were made, they were made in a very different context, and they were made in a great hurry, actually. And so whatever was the easiest alignment was taken. And now that when we are repairing these roads or restoring communication, we find that uh, it's, we should have used a better alignment. Normally in the hills, you normally should go at the top um, of the hill and whatever good alignment is available. But in many cases, so we have to relook. We've recommended that we relook at this whole road network system. Uh, we don't have a single tunnel. Maybe we need more tunnels. Um, then the bridges. There are many bridges. The the, the, the concrete member is fine, but the abutment is gone, so you can't use that bridge. So what what do we learn? Okay, so now what happens? You put a 20 crore bridge, and you don't spend enough. Take the abutment to the uh, have a longer span, and you don't treat the river or gadera or whatever debris source what you're trying to span. You don't treat that. So then you get into problems. So you need to, uh, for the bridges, um, you have to make it in a slightly different manner. Yes, sir. Um, then we need, as we found, a network of airstrips and heliports. And whatever we had made, they came in very useful to us. Um, then we came to know, as the Air Force effort, uh, that, uh, you know, everything goes from the planes to the hills. So we ran out of petrol, or what Air Force uses, which is the turbine fuel. So we had to petrol, diesel, everything was up. The transmitters of microwave towers were stopped. Why they were stopped? With no diesel. So lesson learned, please stock PUL products all over the place. Um, learn last point, sir, before I finish the other points. Uh, we gave a presentation, the state government gave a presentation for NDMA, a prescient presentation about riverbed material and river aggradation. And you, some of the pictures you saw, that's river aggradation. Himalayan rivers carry a lot of debris. And unless you remove that debris, then you're going to have big problems. Part of the flash floods which occurred because of this flood outburst is because of river aggradation. And it continues today. We need to get this RBM out and make the water channels better, deeper, and as naturally they were earlier. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you much. Uh, uh, thank you, Sunil. Sunil has uh, highlighted um, uh, some of the key uh, issues that have emerged um, uh, in this thing. Uh, all I can assure you uh, is that all these issues, as you know, are listed. As a matter of fact, um, uh, touching upon your last, we have had a couple of meetings with the Minister of uh, Environment, this thing. Uh, Bhaskaran and they're sitting here. We have to send, uh, we have to projectize the area because this being in a sensitive eco zone as to where degradation can be done, where the channels can be improved, where the river training can be done. And they said we'll do it from project to project basis. But coming to some important things that uh, you made, I think it is absolutely, absolutely essential that there should be access assessment, there should be carrying uh, capacity uh, assessment, there should be some access control and regulation and there should be registration of visitors and there should be, the route should be so made that it is as safe as possible. You know the circular route or whatever it is. 
But having said that, people often come, they say, you look at uh, Amarnath Ji, you look at Vaishnav Devi, you look at Balaji, how well this is their thing. And then I, I think we must understand the difficulties on the other side. A, as I mentioned earlier, Uttaradham is not a single destination state. There are five major dhams and multiple minor dhams. There are multiple modes of transportation. Number of roads you can access from A, B, C, D, uh, highways or state highways or national highways. You can go by train, you can come by air, you can go by helicopter. So really speaking, the state government has to apply its mind and we are trying to put a system in place that we can still do some work uh, in this regard. I say this because it's, uh, you know, I was involved in some work in the uh, other places, particularly Vaishnav Devi as DG Tourism and Amarnath uh, Yatra as Home Secretary. Uh, it is a bit easier out there than it's out here. But that a system is needed, the point is well uh, taken and it is, it, is, it is conceded. I think the other point which you have made is very important. The history of these roads must be known as to, you know, most of you sitting in the hall will be knowing when the BRO was given the directive to connect it right up to the international borders and so on and so forth. So, and there's always that, uh, you know, the competing demands as to how much money is available and what you have to produce. So I won't, I won't comment as to what was the wisdom at that time when these roads were built um, a few decades ago, but they were done. But now, with this particular thing, again, uh, this issue... Uh, has come up uh, to the fore. So we have, for the um, benefit of the, um, uh, the audience in the hall, have constituted, as I mentioned earlier, there are 200 major slide zones in the state, out of which 25 are on the sensitive roads. Sensitive means highly traveled highways. So we have constituted a team of Central Road Research Institute, the GSI, the BRO and the state PWD to do a complete assessment on these 25 slide zones, which are perennial and always vulnerable. The, the, you know, the soil is very fragile out there, and even, uh, you know, with heavy rains besides, mild showers, you will see the, the, the soil trickling down. And the morphology of the area is such, you can't do nothing about it. So there are various mitigation uh, uh, programs that can be undertaken. Uh, some you can think by synthetic grassing it can, it can help uh, reduce the thing. You may have to build walls, they have done it earlier. Concrete walls, this thing, tunneling as you have mentioned, realignment. So the team is already in place to do that kind of a work. The third key point that you raise, I'm sorry I'm taking this time, is extremely, extremely important, which is documenting the whole thing. Here I mentioned the response system is always great out here because as something happens, you you see the chairperson UPA and the Prime Minister took the visit the next day. The Home Minister has visited twice. The Vice Chairman, all Cabinet Ministers who are in, they are there on the spot to see as to how it is. So obviously the machine kind of get going. Documentation is a key and I would say that it is in place. And for that, in fact, I, I, even the test documentation, I must compliment on the damage assessment, uh, was extremely handy. You've done 92 villages and your, your team was uh, regularly interacting with me and I think they've done a great job. So, but again, as I said, we are wiser after the event. So, you know, uh, but I, let's hope that uh, it brings up uh, uh, some good results, uh, even this wisdom post the event and we are able to set it right and we are able to meet the competing demands of other departments vis-a-vis -vis disaster management. Thank you, Sneet. Our next speaker is Shri A. Sundaramurthy. Shri Sundaramurthy, Director General, Geological Survey of India, has technical as well as administrative experience of more than 34 years with the organization. The important contributions made by him include the areas pertaining to geological mapping, regional geochemical mapping, and mineral exploration. Specific mention may be made of his involvement in timely implementation of the recommendations of the High Powered Committee constituted by the Ministry of Mines Government of India in 2008 to thoroughly review the functioning of Geological Survey of India and assess its capacity to meet the emerging challenges. Shri A. Sundaramurthy.
presentation session. Good morning to all of you. The Honorable Chairman, Vice Chairman, PDMA, Honorable Chair, of the technical sessions, Mr. Uh, V. K. Dugal, Honorable Minister of, of, of Disaster Management of Uttaranchal, Mr. Jashpal Arya, Honorable Secretary, NDMA, uh, of distinguished colleagues, of the distinguished uh, speaker on the dais, the ladies and gentlemen. I'll be presenting. I will be focusing only on the uh, biological aspect which caused the uh, damages in the uh, tarantulas, and you know the. Uh, I'll be try to use a uh, non-technical terms because uh, to understand the common man. I will not use a uh, uh, more of biological terms, the, the, the technical terms. I'll be using a, a common uh, a man's language so that the audience can understand in a better ways. Uh, the Geological Survey of India is the a nodal agency for study of landslides in india and you know the uh, india region as a region we can divide in for three uh, regions uh, regarding the, the active landslides we have the northern regions which consist of the tumachal pradesh uh, uh, the uttaranchals uh, uh, jammu and kashmir we have the northeastern states uh, of the Sikkim, uh, the Mizoram, the North Pradesh, and we have the southern states of Kerala, uh, the Tamil Nadu, uh, especially for Nilgiri part, but on the west coast, uh, just for the Konkan area. And uh, out of all these states, of uh, uh, the Uttaranchali, it's the most vulnerable state for the landslide. Keep it mind of this, uh, uh, the Geological Survey of India just have a, a landslide zone office the, the Daradun and the, uh, this has been functioning for the last 30 years and uh, recently uh, we have strengthened this office uh, to make a state units so that uh, uh, more activities can be taken up from the state. Uh, coming to the uh, Uttaranchal part, uh, like, uh, like, unlike the other states, uh, uh, the Uttaranchal has got a peculiar uh, landscape and you know the it is a rugged mountains and we got high hills and deep valleys and you know the high hills are 8500 meters high and the deep valleys are 38 meters as low so we got the vast rugged topography and high hills and valleys and we have got peculiar geological uh, 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 geomorphic units in this and we got the uh, glaciated valleys uh, at the plate plains and the valleys caused by the rivers and these are the things as a result of the dry hills and there is a lot of precipitation of the river and uh, the soil formation uh, very rapid on the rocks. So this is another peculiarity because of the dry precipitation and the rocks are rapidly converting into soils and we have uh, divided the entire India into five zones. Uh, the most active zones, number four and five, falls in these regions. So it is a, a tectonically a very active zone. Uh, seismically, it is a very prone area, and there is a frequent of the uh, 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 earthquakes in this area. And also, it is a, a landslide prone area. And uh, added to this. Uh, earthquakes we have the uh, rainfall that makes the soil very loose and already the earthquakes the uh, tremors which makes the rocks very soft and uh, fragile and added to this the rainfall which causes makes the soil more fragile this is the thing uh, next slide please and these are the uh, tectonically uh, this zone is a very very active zone we have a lot of liniments, the thrust, the fractures uh, running into kilometers and these are the uh, main folded belts of the, uh, geologically we call the folded belt. The entire rocks are getting folded and there is a fracture zones and we have the uh, 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 sediments are very soft and fragile and we have the uh, uh, mid, uh, we got uh, three major uh, liniments uh, tectonically. One is the, uh, the main thrust fault and main boundary fault and main frontier fault which run uh, kilometers long, uh, the number of kilometers and subsequent to that there is number of other fractures also. Uh, next slides. <coughs> but what made uh, the disaster in, in 2016-2017? Uh, the KV precipitations 
Uh, normally in the month of June, the average rainfall in Uttaranchal will be around 300 millimeters. But the entire month rainfall fall in two days, that is uh, on 16th and 17th, so uh, about 300 millimeters. So that has caught the heavy uh, damage and we have the uh, glaciated lakes. As a result of the heavy rainfall and glaciated valleys are uh, all completely filled and they've broken out and the sediments which are lying within the well within the lake also started you know, pouring out and causes uh, the more damages and we have the uh, uh, vanning of uh, uh, the floods the water level has raised to five to seven meter high and we have the uh, debris started rolling all along the uh, river course from the hill slopes and we have the uh, the river banks have been eroded and there is a colossal uh, uh, properties of lives and the uh, uh, road links. Next. If you look at this figure, the statistic figure which we are given, uh, normally if you look at the uh, rainfall data of the last five years, and uh, uh, 2011, June, it was a 369 millimeter. But if you look at this uh, figure, only on 16th and 70 we are uh, nearly about 300 millimeters rainfall. So the entire month of the rainfall, what we recorded in the early uh, previous five years, that has happened on, on a single day. Uh, that is there. And then uh, coming to the next slides, if you look at this, uh, next, uh, 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 look at this, uh, the rainfall which is peak on 16th and 17th. And even though the rain stopped on 17, uh, uh, late 17th or 18th, but the, the uh, debris flow was continuing for more than one week. That is the major which has caused the uh, damages. Though the rains have stopped, but the outwash which is carrying out the, uh, the material started flowing and it continues for a week time. So that has caused more damages geologically. And what are these, uh, these debris mainly along the main streams and the river they carried out and uh, there, uh, there is a, even the trunk streams and the uh, erosion caused along the banks of the rivers and there is a, a debris flow on the long run all along the uh, flood plains and uh, there is a, a, a slope cutting also along the river. Just another figure, you can see the uh, next slide. Uh, if you uh, look at this, this is the free uh, disaster on, on the left side and the right side is after this that you can see the entire flow of the, uh, the river the debris are being carried out to the villages next slide please. and the, this is the other uh, uh, Kadamath area the entire flood plain the main trunk of the river is completely so damaged and the entire uh, no, the damage is not only by rain, the debris, the rock boulders, the uh, soil washes which carries all along the, uh, uh, from the hilltops has caused uh, more, uh, more damages and they cover the entire atmat, the villages and the, uh, and the houses. Uh, next, uh, this is the tow erosion when the there is a high speed of river, uh, the velocity of the river in uh, water increases, there will be a tow cutting along the banks of the river. Uh, if, if there's a, a tow cutting, uh, uh, the first uh, landslides happens, so that has caused more damages on the on the bank of the streams. So uh, the tow cutting uh, was one of the main reasons for the uh, more landslides after this uh, flood. Next slide. Uh, you can see the, the debris flowing and uh, how the Embankments have been collapsed. And uh, next slide. Uh, what GSA had done immediately after this disasters? And we have constituted a team of ten geologists. And our, uh, our main focus is on three streams. One is uh, relocation of the villages for the safer area. We have identified yeah, uh, geologically uh, uh, non-slide, uh, 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 landslide-prone area, and recommend the government ultimately uh, for shifting these villages. And the second thing is. After the uh, major landslide, there will be a, a subsequent landslides because of rainfall. So those vulnerable areas has been identified, recommend for shifting of the villages immediately. That is uh, another task which we have taken up. And the third thing is for realignment of the road, for reconstruction of road. And this road, what we have collapsed, is uh, vulnerable for uh, landslide. You have to uh, uh, realign the road for helping the state highways on the border roads. So these are the uh, three steps immediately we have taken by GSI and uh, with the help of the state governments. Next slide. And we have uh, 
uh, the worst affected the five district the rudrapriya the chamoli uttarakashi bagashwar and pitwagar these are the area which we have taken up and we identified 20 villages uh, 24 villages on these areas where uh, we recommended for shifting of these uh, villages and also make a safer zone for re uh, rehabilitation of these villages and uh, the uh, 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 studying the road alignment all along the hill uh, uh, slope for fresh cuttings. These are the area which we are taken in the uh, after the uh, the land slides. Uh, next slides. Uh, the and the uh, all along this uh, uh, in the hill tops we have the moraines, the lakes. The lakes have been completely filled up. So, uh, uh, what is the lesson? What we learnt in this, the Uttaranchal uh, is a extremely climb inclined climate area, and this going to be not a one time. It going to be persist for many years. So, we have to be very very precautionally taken the things, and we have to. There will be a lot of uh, uh, loose material which are the hill slopes, and those has to be studied carefully and to separate those uh, scrapes and the loose soils. And we have to, we have to study the uh, 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 moraine and lake to find out its uh, stability, whether it can withstand the more rainwater, and and also if there is a heavy precipitation in the upstream direction, whether this can be able to withstand. So we have to strengthen those uh, lakes and. Uh, uh, Other areas. Yeah, yeah, just one side. And we have the uh, uh, we have to study the core flood plains and other things for uh, study the outwash material. Can we able to do it? Next is the encroachment, and this encroachment has to be taken care of, and there will be a. Uh, uh, depletion of rain. Even though there is a place, uh, damages at the place of the erosion, where the soil is removed, where it gets accumulated, also there will be a damage. So we have to study both the areas for this. Uh, the Terry Dam has prevented the major uh, damage in this area. Suppose it has uh, withstood all the water storage. If this water would have this uh, uh, dam would have not been existing, the entire Water would have been uh, uh, downstream, and the cost of the uh, uh, damage would have been uh, much more in this area. So the Terry Dam, uh, extent of the uh, uh, dam is an advantage to us. The uh, lesson, uh, next slide, please. This is the we have to a robust and a disaster preparation has to be made, and this is going to be a long term for the states. And we have to study uh, uh, our micro zonation. A map we have to prepare the, the geological survey of India doing the study of the uh, micro donations uh, maps and this is uh, land survey donation map has been preparing for especially for uh, along the road alignments we have the uh, a strict uh, regulatory uh, method has to be adopted explain the Tanganyika area and the Nil Giris that are operating uh, strict there is a regulatory mechanism for the uh, people to follow the uh, land use maps so we have to uh, strictly uh, reinforce this. Regulatory mechanism by the state governments, and we have the uh, GSA as now there is a NDMA uh, a TAC taking the advisory council concerned by the government of India, and GSA and NDMA is a part of it, and we'll be collaborating with the uh, we'll be taking uh, giving advisors to the research institute, other agencies which are doing for the land slides, and we have the uh, uh, recently we created a cell in the geological survey of India to centrally uh, monitor the land slide at Calcutta, and uh, especially to uh, uh, have the uh, uh, synergy between the other agencies and the research. In institutes. So this are the thing, and uh, uh, GSA also like to give uh, capacity building for other agencies which are doing uh, landslides uh, uh, in the in the say, other states. And we also like to uh, give our technical advance and make a collaborative program with other agency for studying of these landslides. So these are uh, present patients, and uh, and uh, we'll be taking up the uh, detailed studies in Uttarakhand. We have already submitted. Uh, the preliminary report will be taking up the detailed investigation from the current fields and give the recommendation to the state government. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Sundamurthy ji. Uh, well, I also want to thank the organizers for not placing the bell here, but I'll place a bell in my own uh, quick uh, wrap up. Uh, yeah. But this can take its time. Just one or two quick, quick points I used to make. One is that we had active, very good participation of GSI uh, in the when we had this two-day workshop, or rather three-day workshop at the Malin Institute 
at the Invadi Institute of Himalayan Geology. And all these points were raised uh, very succinctly, very clearly, and we've taken a full note of that. So we wish to thank you for your uh, contribution. I think another significant uh, change that has taken place last year, and I, uh, I wish and I thank, I, I would like to request you, I will we'll also take up with mystery of mind, that uh, it is time that uh, the, the TSC that was constituted after huge persistence by NDMA was constituted last year, on dedicated to landslides, and that we should be kind of taking uh, steps on their decisions. Uh, there is still a lot of work to be done based on the guidelines issued by NDMA a few years back by the Ministry of Mines and GSI and others. And I, I would, I suppose this disaster uh, should uh, send us um, uh, some signal to do some work. I think one of the key things which came out in that um, uh, that seminar or other workshop was, and you also mentioned it in passing, is that the entire Himalayan region has, in many respects, of course Uttarakhand is the most slide prone zone area, has many common running problems. And there was a thought of, you know, constituting, which is an old thought of Himalayan Development Council. So that whatever you're thinking for, I mean, the right hand must know what the left is doing, and maybe all the initiatives and the technologies and the knowledge uh, can be shared. But more on that we'll dwell later. I have to quickly move on, um, you know, because the next technical session which is to be chaired by Vice Chairman, of course he should be thanking me, because then that should, session would be even shorter. So, less time on the dais. Sadhana, over to you. Our last speaker for this technical session is Professor S. Parshuraman, Director, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. He is an academician and researcher and has taught at Tata Institute of Social Sciences.